Hello, this is Angela again. And today I want to begin to share some thoughts about how to have faith. It's interesting, there are many talks and discussions about faith. Everybody is having some faith. Some are believing in other gods. Some are believing on their own. Some are believing to earn a lot of money and to have a lot of power and influence on others. Some are believing that there is no God. It is also faith. But how can we have faith? And before I begin, I want, as usual, first pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you that we may have faith and that we can increase our faith. We are like these small plants just planted into the earth and we are very vulnerable. I ask for me and also for all those who are listening, give us the Holy Spirit. Teach us what you want us to believe and what you want us to say that is uh, your words, not mine words and that everybody is able to understand it. And thank you for this wonderful lesson. It helps me and it will also help all those who are listening. And I will thank you for all this. And I ask you increase our faith. This I pray in your almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This word is from E. Stanley Jones. Faith is not merely your holding onto God. It is God holding onto you. He will not let you go. You know, I had a time when I was asking the Lord, the Lord, don't let me go. And he was kicking me and I went through a difficult, uh, difficult years, but he kept holding on me. And I'm very faithful about it. I thank God for this, that he's so faithful. He did not let me go. Faith or fear? Also some words from Stanley Jones. He was a well-known missionary who worked in India. He was the Indian Billy Graham. He was, uh, his, his parents were Methodist. This I know, what he was, I don't know exactly. But he said, I'm inwardly fashioned for faith, not for fear. Fear is not my native land, faith is. I am so mad that worry and anxiety are sand in the machinery of life. Faith is the oil. I live better by faith and confidence than by fear, doubt, and anxiety. In anxiety and worry, my being is gasping for breath. These are not my native air. But in faith and confidence, I breathe freely. These are my native air. A John Hopkins, Hopkins doctor says, we do not know why it is that warriors die sooner than the non-warriors, but that is a fact. But I, who am simple of mind, think I know. We are inwardly constructed in nerve and tissue, brain, cell, and soul for faith and not for fear. God made us that way. To live by worry is to live against reality. We need to have faith, otherwise we won't survive then everything that can shake us will shake us. But the Lord is good, he's giving us his faith. I just listened um, to a part of uh, lessons on faith from Wagner and I think H. Jones. And there they said, um, if we don't have enough faith, faith, let it go and let's have Jesus' faith. But now we will go on into, soon into the studies. Faith is not merely you're holding on to God, it is God holding on to you. He will not let you go. And this was also Stanley Jones, it's, I'm sorry, it's a repetition. During an especially trying time in the work of the China Inland Mission, the very, very well known Hudson Taylor, the China missionary, wrote to his wife. And he wrote, We have 25 cents. And all the promises of God. And you know what happened to him. God was sustaining him. He was helping him. It was a success, his China mission. Praise Lord. Praise the Lord for this. It is incredible. 
how to have faith. What is the prerequisite for pleasing the Lord? In Hebrews 11, verse 6, we find, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's seek the Lord. Let's pray that the Lord may have a very close connection with us and that we are yearning after the Lord and that we are believing that he is because he is. He has created everything by his all-powerful word, only by his word, and everything came into existence. It is impossible to please God without faith. Then faith must be very important. It is important. How much faith has God dealt to human beings? Romans 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think on, of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. It's a measure of faith. Everybody is having a measure of faith. Perhaps it's only a little corn or less than this. Perhaps a little piece of dust. The Bible teaches that everyone has given a, has been given a measure of faith. We need to improve on the measure of faith that God has given and learn how we should exercise it because it can grow. Jesus said, and if your faith is like a corn of sinner, it can grow unto a tree. It has to grow. We have to exercise our faith. Do we see? How do we obtain more faith? Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh, cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know, listening to good sermons is a really good thing to increase our faith in studying the Bible. As we spend time in God's word, our faith will increase in proportion, proportion to the time we spend in his word. We can uh, study this prayer, surely, and we can dig very, very deep because often most viewers, they do have some references under nearly every Bible verse. And when you have, are having some difficulties to understand one verse, you can have a look on the other verses because often they are explaining themselves. The Bible is self-explanatory. That means to every verse there is at least one or two other verses to prove if this is right, if you have understood it right or not, because on two or three witnesses, a word is established. And this is especially true for the Bible. You can buy a Bible concordance with many references and do a word search, search or you can go on uh, e-sort, e hyphen sort. And there you can also find it. I prefer paper, but many are very quick with this, and this is good for them. And when we are spending time in God's word, our faith will increase in proportion to the time we spend in his word, and pondering and meditating on his word. What happens when we exercise the faith that we have? Mark 11, 22 to 24. And Jesus, Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them, especially when it is after the will of God. For example, if somebody is trying to get rid of alcohol or tobacco, and it is in the Lord's will that uh, we are free from dependency, that we are not dependent on those things. And there is a word in the Bible, it is 3 John 2.
Beloved, I wish above, uh, above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And also whatsoever we ask, he shall give it to us if it is after his wish. When we exercise the faith that we have, we will find, if it is the will of God, that mountains of difficulties will be removed. But sometimes you have to be a bit patient. <laughs> sometimes it takes some time, but the Lord knows best at which time he wants to remove our difficulties. Sometimes you have to come to him and plead and plead and have a closer relationship with him. This I also feel very strongly. But when I am having a problem, he wants to have me closer to him. That I am listening more to him, what he is saying in his words, and to some people, and then I say, ah, yes, I understand. It is my fault to, do, to think in this way, because our fault, our thoughts are not always right. What is faith based on? Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We are hoping for things. We have heard about Jesus. I have talked about Jesus, about what he did for us, that he died on the cross for our sins, for your, my sins, that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. This is the hope. It is the substance of things. We have um, the evidence that he has done it, but we can't see him now. The faith mentioned in the Bible is not a blind faith, but a faith based upon evidence. God does not expect his children to have faith if they do not have sufficient evidence to base on it. And therefore, I wrote, it is a well-documented fact that Jesus lived here on earth. You can read more about it by Josephus, a well-known Romano-Jewish scholar and historian. There you can find that he existed. He was living here on earth. It is a, it is a fact. It is not a fairy tale. It is a real fact. He was living here on earth. What is faith based on? Faith is not the ground of our salvation. It's very important. But it is the great blessing. The eye that sees, the ear that hears, the feet that run, the hand that grasps. It is a means and not the end. If Christ gave his life to save sinners, why shall I not take that blessing? My faith grasps it, and my, thus my faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Thus resting and believing, I have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is so nice. When are we benefited by God's word? Hebrews 4 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why not? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see, the faith is very important. The word of God can be read in such a way that it does not bring any spiritual benefit. It must be mixed with faith. It also must be applied to the life of the reader, not only hearing and going away and forgetting all what, what we have read. This I have sometimes when I think, oh, oh you've forgotten what you read in the morning. But pondering about it during the day, therefore, sometimes it doesn't have use only reading the Bible like, like, um, like normal literature. Better is to read one verse an important verse and thinking about it through the whole day this gives much more impact. What will true faith lead us to? First John 5 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us. And when we know that he is hearing us then we know he will give it to us but to his appointed time. He knows best when the right time is to get it. True faith breeds confidence in what God can do. The opposite is also true. If a person does not have faith, he does not have confidence in what, can, what God can do. Therefore, 
The Christian must continue to spend time in God's work and talking to him in prayer because sometimes we are so busy and we have some problems and then we have difficulties to understand what the God uh, what the word its meaning is, and then we may ask the Lord that He will explain it to us, and He will. Everything what is after His will, He is hearing us, and He will give us this one. And we may thank Him in advance for this that we have gotten it. How can we see faith? And I'm thinking on an experience. I uh, there is a little video about it victory uh, over tobacco and alcohol, trying to listen to it. There was a man, he was smoking and drinking a lot of beer, and by the grace of God, he got rid, through prayer and faith, he got rid of the alcohol and of the tobacco, and this is to, be, to the glory of God. He is to be praised because he can do all these things. How can we see faith? I'm thinking on the paralytic who was lowered through the roof. Jesus was very busy. And I quote uh, Luke 5, 17 to 19. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to hear them. All those people, they wanted to hear him. It was cloudy and there was no place. And behold, man brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tear tiling with his cows into the midst before Jesus, you see? It was so crowded and noisy. Nobody heard that there was somebody who wanted to get healed. And the friends, they were trying and trying from this side, from that side, to the door, to the window, nothing. Everything was full packed with people. And at last they decided to take some parts of the roof and let him through the roof. And then Jesus was looking up, and when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy sins are forgiven. And he healed them also, surely. But the man, he was very desperate. He wanted to know, is he uh, accepted by the Lord? He was believing in Jesus. But he thought, oh, I have done so many bad things. And his heart was so worried about it. And Jesus said to him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Praise the Lord. The Lord is also doing this with you and me. We are sinners. We have bad inclinations from nature because of the fall of Adam and Eve. And we can't do anything when asking the Lord to forgive us. But we may be glad in the Lord because he is loving us. Note, faith is seen in action. When one is actively seeking to please the Lord by following the word of God, there is faith. See? When we are acting on the word, when he says uh, in, the, in the Hebrew, it is not, you shall not, you will not, you will not steal, and the person is inclined to steal. Then, by the grace of the Lord and the power of his word, he will not steal. It's incredible. But this is going on with the Lord of, Lord of God. It is almighty. How can we see faith? Here you see a little picture with a um, paralytic lying there on the wood. Um, I don't know how to say it in English. And the friends are helping him down that he is coming before Jesus. What part does faith play in our salvation? Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is by faith that we believe in the free gift of salvation. You cannot say, I'm believing, and then I am I get proud, and I say, ha, I am believing, and you, you are yeah, the last one. 
in this room. No, no, it is the grace of God because it is a free gift. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it because it is only by the love of Christ who died for you and me on the cross and gave his life for our sins that we, meanwhile, we are believing in him, may have eternal life. That's the courage. It is by faith that we believe in the free gift of salvation. What should a Christian live by? Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is it. We will not live our own life without inclinations. We are to live by faith. We are to live as if we are in the very presence of God, for we are actually living in his presence, because he can see your heart. He knows exactly what it is in your and my heart, what we want to do, what we don't want to do, where we have some corporate ways. He sees it, and therefore, kind of give yourself to Jesus, that you can say it like Paul, I am crucified with joy. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, of the Son of God, not our faith, who loved me and gave himself to me. That's the point. We are living by the faith of Christ. He is believing in us. And he gave his life as, um, yeah, as an offer in advance. Because he knew you and me, we would be living in these times, in these strange uh, times. And he gives his life for you. And here it is again a little, with a little picture. And uh, it is so nice. This is the word, our uh, work to learn by heart. Let me have a look at it. How do we inherit the promises of God? Hebrews 6, 12. That he be not slothful, but followers of them who, who faith and patience inherit the promises. Not slaving, but we are following him through faith and patience. Once again, we see just how important faith is. It is to faith and patience that the promises of God are embraced. We need a patience that they will come through because an impatient person can't wait so long. But the Lord has promises, and I'm thinking on Abraham and Sarah. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac, his own son, uh, from him and Sarah was wrong. They had to wait so long years, so many years. But God kept his promise. But sometimes his promises, we don't need to, to wait 80 years for it. So then I will be dead when, when I should wait 40 or 60 or 80 years on a promise. But sometimes it takes some time, but it, the fulfillment will also come at the right point of time. Be assured of this. What must accompany faith in order for the faith to be genuine? James 2, 17. Even so faith, if it has not works, it is dead, being alone. It is like looking into a mirror, and this is James 1, and uh, looking into God's word and forgetting how it looks like, and forgetting how uh, we are looking, and uh, continuing in the old way. It has to have works. It is not enough for someone to say that they have faith. That faith must be seen by his works. If a person has genuine faith, works will naturally follow. You can see, these are some of the fruits. You can see if a person is a Christian. And if you see they are missing some fruits, you can encourage this person to live more by faith, to live of the Lord, of the word of the God, feasting on the word of the Lord. Increasing faith. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith, Luke 17, 5. 
And this means to uh, to live the faith. You have to talk faith. You have to live faith. You have to act faith. That you may have an increase of faith, and thus exercising that living faith, you will grow to strong men and women in Jesus Christ. And we can increase our faith also by studying the word of God. And in the morning, if you are asking the Lord before you go to sleep, dear Lord, kindly awaken me when you want me to study your word. And you can do it in the evening in the family circle, which is very important for the children. And also, meanwhile, during the day when having time, I don't know how much you are working or if you are having some spare time during the day. But we have to talk faith, to live faith, to act faith. But you may have an increase of faith. And you can prove the Lord by his promises. You can say, dear Lord, I'm having a problem, for example, what I said, stealing. And you say in your word, in one of the Ten Commandments, you will say not steal, or you will not steal. Help me, not to steal. Help me not to, to lie and other things. And he will do it. And especially when we are tempted to do the wrong thing, then we can ask in our mind, the Lord, kindly Lord, help me now. I don't want to do the bad thing. And he will help you. He will find a way of escape for you, like First Corinthians 10, verse 13. How is it that we overcome the allurements of this present world? First John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith is absolutely vital in overcoming this world. In fact, it is impossible without faith. From this study, it has been very evident how important faith is. Faith penetrates every privilege of our experience with Jesus. It's true. We have to believe in him because we can't see him. Our eyes are closed. It is as if we are having a curtain over our eyes. But through faith, we can come through the curtain and come near to God, coming nearer to him by studying, by praying, and by acting on all the things we are learning from the word of God. And this, uh, it is a very interesting journey to live with the uh, word of God and doing his will, because you will experience many incredible, incredible and um, astonishing things, and you will become glad about it and happy because you are doing the will of the Lord. For, so ever, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Is, is it your desire to seek to grow in faith by feeding on God's word? Yes, amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are giving us faith. Dear Lord, I'm asking you, increase our faith. Let us believe in you and give us the power of the Holy Spirit and the willingness to do your will and the time to study your word. Kindly awaken us in the morning that we will have time for prayer, meditation, and that Bible study and think about the words and how we can apply them into our lives. Kindly you lead us through your word into all eternity because you died for our sins that everybody who believes in you shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I ask also forgive all of us who have sinned because we all come short of the glory of God and help us to go the safe way to you, to the heavenly mansions, because you will soon come back and increase our faith, that we are living it, talking it, praying it, acting on it. And I thank you for everything what you are doing. This I ask in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you very much for listening. May the Lord bless you and let's increase our faith. This is also for me. It was very good for me, self to study it. And I wish you a nice day or morning or evening. I don't know when you are listening to it, but the Lord may be with you and lead you. Bye bye.